discussing this chapter today. James five. Sinuses just a wild. Mm -hmm. We probably don't want to discuss that. Mm -hmm. That's more than enough information. I did find because I have to uh, wear a mask going in physical therapy and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Well, I found one that sticks out so it gives you more breathing. Room. <clears throat> and I have to change filter in it about every two weeks or so, or, or a week. That much you use it, right? Yeah, well, I went physical therapy twice a week, and then. Where so, did you get that? Um, it's from Outdoor Research. They got it online. Okay. Yeah, but I, uh, I think we are into another mask event. Right. Anyway, so we're going. So we'll see. Well, the powers that be are. Yeah. yeah. Well, anyway. Um, Propec, come on. Yep. Mm -hmm. He's there. That, that was, those were really nice, uh, Gary. Is that uh, something fresh that you baked? Absolutely. Of course it is. Baked them just for Ed. I use drooling over here. I have to, I have to confess, though, um, it, it's not my, uh, some, uh, I have a person who taught me how to make those. They're probably the best cinnamon rolls I've gotten around. And that was um, Sue Arcees. She uh, she taught me this, so kudos to her. But uh, I have people fight over my cinnamon rolls. <laughs> well, well, if we were a little closer, Gary, if we were a little closer. <laughs> FedEx, Gary, FedEx. Hey, somebody asked Sue to make a batch. I bet she would. <laughs> OK, that's true. She's. she's she does a very good job with it. Let's go ahead and get started. Um, we're a, a, a few uh, fewer people, but um, Ed, do you have any openings for us? Oh, I'm daydreaming here. <laughs> or or uh, Carol, do you have do you have anything for us before while Ed's pulling up his uh, sure. opening comments? I have just a couple of things here. Huh. Been an old book here. Sven and Oli were talking, and they asked one asked the other, "How many sweets does it take to grease a combine?" Doctor Sven replied, "That no, Oli said only two if you run them through real slow." <laughs> oh, that's bad. <laughs> Oli bought Lena a piano for her birthday. Two weeks later, Lars inquired how she was doing with it. Oh, said Oli, "I persuaded her to switch to a clarinet." Hmm. How come, asked Lars. Well, only asked you because it, with the clarinet, she can't sing. <laughs> <laughs> They're getting better. But the Olympics just one. <coughs> only went to the Olympics while sitting on a bench. A lady turned to Oli and said, Are you a pole vaulter? Oli said, no, I'm Norwegian, and my name isn't Walter. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Carol. Those are better well, than the ones you had before. jokes first to start. <laughs> I may have told this one a long time ago, this story, but I'll do it again, because you probably forgot. Yeah. <laughs> if it was last week or earlier. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a king wanted to go fishing, and he asked the royal weather caster the forecast for the next few hours. The palace meteorologist assured him that there was no chance of rain. So the king and queen went fishing. On the way, they met a man with a fishing pole riding on a donkey. And he asked the man if, if the fish were biting. 
The fisherman said, your majesty, you should return to the palace. In just a short time, I expect a huge rainstorm. The king replied, I hold the palace <clears throat> meteorologist in high regard. He is an educated and experienced professional. Besides, I pay him very high wages. He gave me a very different forecast. I trust him. So the king continued on his way. However, in a short time, the torrential rain fell from the sky. The king and queen were totally soaked, furious. The king returned to the palace and gave the order to fire the meteorologist. Then he summoned the fisherman and offered him a prestigious position of royal forecaster. The fisherman said, your majesty, I do not know anything about forecasting. I obtained my information from my donkey. If I see the don donkey's ears drooping, it means with certainty that it will rain. So the king hired the donkey. <laughs> Thus began the practice of hiring dumbasses to work in inf influ influential positions of government. And the practice continues this day. <laughs> I would have remembered that one. <laughs> so by the epistle of Ed. <laughs> okay. Very good. Leroy, you've got our devotions this morning. I do. Thank you. And good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. morning. I, a couple of weeks ago, I tuned in on, a, on an online service with a pastor from uh, All Sinners and Saints. Uh, yeah, I think I'm saying that right. Mm -hmm. And he was giving a talk on before Amen and talking about how he starts his day in the morning by saying one thing is, is that I know that God loves me unconditionally. <clears throat> amen. And he would go on from his day from there. And that reminded me that I had at one time bought a book by Max Licata. That called before Amen. And I went through all my books that I had in a small bookcase where I'm at and the uh, box I had not in the garage. I could not find that book. <laughs> it either got lost in the move or something. But anyway, I went on the internet and I found something that Max Lakata had said about that book. And I'll read this to you that I found. It's, he said, some people get prayer. They inhale heaven and exhale God. They re retreat to prayer mountains and prayer events. They would rather pray than sleep. Why is it that I tend to sleep when I pray? My mind waters, my thoughts zig, then zag, then zig again. Distractions swarm like gnats on a summer night. Prayer giant, hardly. Prayer wimp, admittedly. But I am happy to add, I am a recovering prayer wimp. I discovered a few things about prayer that invigorated my prayer life, and here's one. All the prayers of the Bible be, can be condensed into a single prayer. And the prayer is a simple one, just six lines. And I call it the pocket prayer. It's, Father, you are good. I need help. So do they. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> I let this prayer punctuate my day. I keep it in the back of my mind, ever within reach of my thoughts. As I drive through traffic, Father, walking through the office, you are good. Stopping, stepping into a meeting, I need help. I look at the stressed faces of the receptionist. They need help. As this draws to an end, thank you, Jesus. Amen. And it goes on to say, God will teach you to pray. Don't think for a minute that he is giving you, that is that he is blaring at you from a distance with crossed arms and, and a scowl, mm -hmm. waiting for you to get your prayer life together. It's just the opposite. Here I am. I stand at the door and knock. 
if you hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and eat with you and you will eat with me. And that's from Revelation 3. Jesus waits on the porch. He stands on the threshold. He taps and calls. He waits for you to open the door. To pray, to pray is to open it. Prayer is the hand of faith on the door handle of your heart. Let's reach out and open the door. Amen. Thank you. And prayer, would like to just repeat the prayer that was given here. It says, Father, you are good. I need help. So do they. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Good. Thanks, Leroy. Arnie, it looks like we're uh, getting close to finishing, James. <laughs> Probably. Uh, or so. <clears throat> or so. You know, it's uh, it's been it's been an interesting time. But anyway, the the, uh, um, the last couple in James five, the, the last couple. Of, let me just read the. <clears throat> And, and I think it, it, Leroy's devotion really fits in uh, this morning with, with uh, James, starting with verse 13 there, where he says, Is any one of you in trouble? He should pray. Is anyone happy? Let him sing songs of praise. Is any one of you sick? He should call the elders of the church to pray over him and anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise him up. If he has sinned, he will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. Elijah was a man just like us. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the land for three years, three and a half years. Again, he prayed, and the heavens gave rain, and the Lord produced its, its crops. My brothers, if one of you should wonder from the truth, and someone bring him back, should bring him back, remember this. Whoever turns a sinner from the error of his way will save him from death and cover over a multitude of sins. And... Uh, one of the questions I put down here is share an example of a spouse, a friend, a pastor whose service, care, and prayer meant deeply uh, for you. I couldn't think of a specific moment, <clears throat> but. Um, When my dad was sick a couple of times, he had a heart attack when he was in his 60s and, and uh, other things as he got older. Mm -hmm. There were a lot of people praying for him. <clears throat> and he lived almost 95. So. Prayer was answered. Yep. Prayer was answered. Yeah. One of the things that meant, uh, meant a lot to me is when Pastor Rand would come um, for my surgeries and um, hold my hand and say, "Work for him. You know, and off I'd go on my <laughs> end of surgery and out. Yeah. 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 There was a time, though, that um, uh, I was uh, I, I was a frequent visitor. I was, every every week for 13 weeks, I was, was in uh, DOR for for a treatment of a infection and fluid in my back, fluid in my spine. And uh, the anesthesiologist says, I've seen you before. Yes, you have. <laughs> <laughs> so tell you what, you want to do your own uh, anesthetic? Yeah, I do. And so he hands me over a syringe and, and uh, I said, what is this? This is a little fentanyl. OK, so I squeeze it in. OK. And then he hands me a big 60 cc of, of propofol. And, and I start squeezing it in slowly. He said, no, you got to put it a little faster. 
Boom. <laughs> 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 But those those prayers that uh, uh, before you go into surgery, um, and she didn't show up every week for 13 weeks. <laughs> it would have been a little above and beyond the call of duty. But uh, that, that does have um, that does have a serious moment there for for a bit. You don't know what's going to happen once you come out. So mm -hmm. they do, you know, surgeons do their best. Yeah, you hope. <laughs> Right. You know, but, uh, oh, get, well, Pastor Ann, <laughs> beyond the call of duty, I think, is, <laughs> was good at that. Yeah. When uh, Kathy was in the hospital after she had that stroke or whatever it is, it, it, Pastor Ann came and she spent just about the whole day with her there. Mm -hmm. I mean, it wasn't just a short visit. I mean, I, mm -hmm. most of the day. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. I remember about 25 years ago, <clears throat> our uh, youngest daughter uh, got the call from the hospital and said, we have, we have lungs for you. Uh, she was on the lung transplant list. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> it was like the 28th of December uh, between Christmas and New Year's. And uh, so we hurriedly got everything together and went down. Thank you, Robert. Uh, in the waiting room there at the University of Colorado, uh, people kept coming in, friends, and Pastor Keith was there. Uh, and we waited, I don't know how many hours it was. It seemed like days, but it was just hours. And uh, all those people were there supporting and uh, were praying. And people brought dinner that night and all this kind of stuff. And now here she is 25 years later. Uh, being a pain in the butt every so <laughs> long. paranoid as I'll get out and uh, but she's finally decided that yes she wants to go to South Dakota with us and so she's gotten involved in that which is really nice to see so anyway a lot of people involved there a lot of people mm -hmm. That, that is one of the blessings of being a pastor is that you share in critical moments in people's lives in the hospital, you know, before surgery, uh, e even in like marriage preparation, you, you, there, there's prayer in that with, with the young couple, or there's uh, uh, being at the deathbed of somebody who's, you know, on the last thing, and you can, uh, there, there's in prayer, there's a certain I mean, calm focus. I mean, there's a, a certain peace that comes because you know that you're placing this person and this cause into God's hands in a way that maybe it was not done before. And, and so, you know, it, it gives a, um, it, it gives a sense of, uh, in, in the midst of all the stress, <laughs> It, it does give a sense of quietness and, and hope and, and, and peace. And, uh, um, you know, I've, I've never been in a situation where I've been in a couple situations, but um, um, it, it, it's where prayer has helped. And, and uh, yeah, and so it's uh, um, important. Yeah. And I think, you know, uh, <clears throat> many of us who were raised by parents of faith, probably have had hundreds, thousands of prayers <laughs> Pray, prayed by parents for us as we grew up, that we would, you know, um, walk, walk the way and and be faithful. And uh, 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 I don't know, my mom was was very much into that. And every night, she she uh, she'd get my brother and sister and me. Uh, and we would have, um, you know, a Bible story and a prayer, and then we'd go to bed. But it was always closing out the day with that time of devotion and prayer. And uh, um, it was, uh, you know, something that sticks with me and 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 shaped me and, and moved me through the uh, through, through the years. And um, so I'd say, uh, 
It is, yeah. Do you yeah, think that had an effect on you going into the ministry? Uh, maybe I, not directly. That, that maybe not directly, yes. but uh, it, uh, it it certainly it was a, a faith builder. Sure. Uh, and uh, and I I, I was uh, I attended a parochial school uh, for uh, my elementary years, so that was a lot of you know, that was a faith shaping thing too. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I went to public high school, but uh, I went off to a Lutheran college <laughs> and seminary. And that, down the road that way. So, uh, uh, but uh, yeah. You know, one one of the things that, as I think of what happened from our parents' generation, grandparents, and how that passed down, and we tried to pass down those same things: a, a prayer before a meal, or a bedtime prayer. And our oldest son's grand grandkids <coughs> are. 15 and 16 year olds. There was a time, and I may have said this before, we were outside of my birthday celebration. We had everybody there. And Ivan was about 13 or 14 at the time. And I said, Ivan, how about you lead us in prayer? Blanched. <laughs> he, just, he just, Mom, <laughs> they're not teaching them what prayer means. And they, they, it's, and since they're in the military and they moved around every two years, they didn't get any confirmation and training or anything. And they jump around from, you know, from military churches were oftentimes led with by Baptists or Catholics or whomever was, uh, was on station. And uh, yet our youngest ones, um, youngest son and grandkids, they, they know. They know how to... We, even though we sing a, a a prayer before a meal or something like that, or say a, say a prayer before uh, you know at bedtime, they know. So it's frustrating for the older ones for us. You know, Annie Dietz gave a good example of prayer in her uh, meditation Sunday mm -hmm. about be, being feeling upset about you know her father that kind of thing. It didn't sure. One of the kids said, you know, we'll pray for you. And uh, it kind of changed the whole, uh, her whole perspective of the day. And, uh, you know, yeah, so that was, that was an example of even a, a small child mm -hmm. leading. Oh, yeah. Uh, and, and that was, yeah. uh, you know, that was a, a powerful example, I thought. From the, uh, it's heartwarming when you see the children that will pray. Yes. When yeah. uh, doing growing home, what was one of the times when we met here at the church, it was a young boy and the family I always made a point of praying before, the, uh, asking the people to pray before the meal. Mm -hmm. And then I'd ask, did anybody have a prayer? And he says, I do. <laughs> and he said, I want to thank going home. I want to thank the people that have prayer, made this meal as a blessing. He went on and on for a while. Mm -hmm. I, he was about... Uh, Eight years old, I think, or something like that. Mm -hmm. It was just wonderful. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I had the same problem. My son doesn't go to church, and uh, but we started praying before meals with, when we have the grandkids. And mm -hmm. now my five-year-old grandson, he asks to say a prayer before we eat. <laughs> That's good. So. The way we started was a uh, Johnny Appleseed song. We'd, we'd right. sing the Johnny Appleseed song, yeah. and, and that tune stays with them. You know, you know. Opening words are, well, the Lord is good to me. Yeah. And so I thank the Lord. Yeah. And I, I think even, uh, and I, I don't know the history of this group right here, but, uh, you know, I think at the end, maybe more than just the Lord's Prayer, as, as we go around the table, and maybe each one of us say a prayer uh, about something that concerns us at this moment, or or add, and maybe add a, a a prayer for this community of faith. Uh, I know, I, I think Cross of Christ is kind of going through a transition point at this time, right? Mm -hmm. And you know, maybe that you know, in our closing prayers, we would add uh, you know just a a sentence or two each of us that you know you know that. 
that God would lead us through the through the process where we become, uh, you know, more strengthened as a community of faith and service to our community, that kind of thing. So, you know, as, as well as raising any kind of individual concerns, because, uh, uh, you know, uh, James uses the word brothers 15 times in his thing. And what we have here is brothers. I don't see any sisters. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, that we pray for uh, that we as brothers, you know, raise up prayers, you know, on behalf of uh, whatever concerns are on our heart, plus this community of faith, which is uh, ser serving um, the um, Broomfield, Westminster, uh, North Glen communities. And uh, I think that would be a, 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 a joyful thing. Um, the, the um, well, how can we deepen our prayer lives? That was another question. I think for me, it just has to come kind of naturally. It has to just flow out of whatever was on my mind or in my heart kind of thing. And, I, you know, I tried to do prayer memorization. I've got prayer books. I've got this. I've got that. What really works is to sit down and be comfortable with God and just start with whatever's on my mind. Mm -hmm. You know, usually it's in front of Scripture, and I read a little bit of Scripture first. And it's whatever the day brings sort of a thing. Mm -hmm. You know, you just, you can't, it's not... I'll use the word forced. It, you just you have to let it occur naturally and just come up and, and process as part of the natural just being. Mm -hmm. I found that to be uh, effective mm -hmm. for myself. Mm -hmm. I put down by praying for others. Mm -hmm. When you pray for others, it seems to... Yeah. We have many blessings... Yeah, we have problems too ourselves, but when you pray for others, it puts things in perspective. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's not just me, what, what I want, but it's a, a care and love for the community in which I'm living yeah. and, and, and being. And I think that's become, uh, you know, become a uh, significant thing too. Mm -hmm. And, uh, um, Is uh, is there any kind of prayer ministry here at, at the Cross of Christ? Any kind of? Uh, I, think, I think there is. Yeah. Okay. We do have a prayer chain. Uh, mm -hmm. it, um, I know my wife uh, is, is part of it. Okay. It, uh, uh, I don't know who starts it. I assume Pastor won't uh, to pray for someone next to. Uh, is sick or having other problems. And what they do is uh, my wife will receive a call and then she'll call someone. And is that going on now again? Or did the pandemic sort of... <laughs> well, well, let's put it this way. My wife's been gone for three weeks. I have. And I don't keep track of her phone calls. <laughs> I wouldn't even try. <laughs> yeah. She's still in Chicago? No, she came back, she back last home. night. With a 105-year-old mother in Chicago. Yes. She um, was an interesting. Uh, she was supposed to uh, land in Denver at 710. And finally at uh, 940, the flight came in. So... You have to plan on that when you fly. <laughs> the good news is, is it came in. Right. <laughs> a prayer was answered. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, there was a tornado outside of uh, Chicago. Oh, oh yeah. Right. This time of year. Yeah. 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 And I was happy to wait. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. One of the things I've missed for quite a while that we had here at Cross of Christ when I first joined was. Uh, there were, during the prayers of the people, there was a list in the bulletin of all the military and the people that were asking for prayers here in this congregation for themselves or for others outside the congregation. And that went away. 
and I've always been disappointed that it yeah. went away. Yeah. And they used to read read the names. They, they, yeah. And then they yeah. used to read the names, but for yeah. a long time, yeah. they still published the names. Right. And then that went away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why. You don't get answers necessarily when you ask that question. Is it is it even is uh, if if I wanted to raise a, a reach a prayer chain, is there even a link in the bulletin? No, no. You know, they just I think they so. just say call the office. Yeah. It it, it used it to be passed. every week in the newsletter, but I don't yeah. recall seeing it for a either. long time now. Yeah. Yeah. They used to have a uh, a prayer a box with, over uh, there. Yeah. Yeah. With, yeah. with a, a sheet of paper and you could write down right. who you wanted to pray for and what, what the issue was. And then it said on the bottom, this would be given to the prayer group. I forget what they're right. called, but uh, you know, prayer you team. want them to pray for her too or him too. And you check the box, yes or no. But I don't see that anymore. For the Thursday morning uh, women's group, I bet they know. They, they, they know, know everything. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> Grover, Grover, I was an assisting minister, and the reason that we stopped reading the names during the service was that it was getting too long, and we did have people who complained that it was too long and too many names. <laughs> and so we went to just in the uh, in the service, we just we went to a, a simple line. And those people mentioned in the bulletin. Um, those were the instructions I was given as an assisting minister. At that point, they were still being printed, though, in the bulletin, the names, right? Yes, they were. Yes, they were. Yeah, and that, yeah. and even that has gone away. Yeah. I mean, they give you the option now during the prayer to, to out loud, say mm -hmm. somebody's name if you want. But a lot of people aren't comfortable with that. Except the Baptists, right? <laughs> the Baptists are comfortable with that. We're Lutheran. That's right. <laughs> we're, we're the frozen chosen. Right. <laughs> the frozen chosen. Well, I, 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 you know, I'm not saying what should be done, but I think that it's a, uh, uh, I know I, uh, when, I, when I first retired, I was involved in a little bit at Concordia in Lakewood, and uh, I'm, I'm still on their email uh, list, but but almost every day or every other day, they'll come an email saying, um, and I don't know how they set it up, but uh, you know, pl please pray for my mom who has uh, ha had a stroke or something like that. And you can get the emails. And so you can, you know, in other words, the, the concerns are sent out to the congregation and, and people can be, be involved in, in, in the prayer life. And I think that, you know, uh, that, that's, I think a, a significant thing, you know, is that, if, if we are a community of faith, you know, I think what God is saying to us is, okay, let's be a community and pray for each other. And that's what James is saying here, you know, th th let's pray for each other. But if I don't know that um, Grover or Leroy or Carol is sick or something like that, I'm, I'm not going to be able to pray for you. Okay, I mean, I, uh, that kind of thing. But so what I'm saying is, uh, and I'm not telling Cross of Christ what to do since I'm kind of a... <laughs> an outlier, but uh, I, I, I think that, you know, um, you know, prayer, prayer is, is, is a significant part of the Christian journey. And, and I think that that's, uh, uh, yeah. uh, and it's not just pray for Arnie, okay. Yeah, all you guys, I want you to pray for me, okay. <laughs> Am I gonna pray for you? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he made coffee a day. He makes, he brings me a cup of tea. <laughs> I'll pray for him. <laughs> okay. And, and oh, well, you got somebody for you. Okay. <laughs> Pastor Ernie, nothing wrong with a gentle suggestion from an outsider either. <laughs> okay. Or a not so gentle suggestion. <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll yeah. pray for you just to uh, just to pinpoint the the person. Yes. 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 Yeah. Uh, uh, no. uh, but normally uh, uh, we pray. For ourselves first, yourself first, and then you automatically uh, transfer to everybody around you mm -hmm. uh, in the lower, middle, and upper, and all that, whoever needs the, the prayer. 
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's, that's how we do it all the time. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that, that's a good way to do it. Yeah. yeah. yeah we do it all the way through is it, it automatically goes to whoever needed, you know. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to have a list of this group, that group, that person, this person. You could always go out, like, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. spread out in, in equal spectrum. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. 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 Good. Great. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, prayer, prayer is prayer is an important part, and it's our connection with 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 our with our Lord, and uh, uh, and uh, I think in verse sixteen there it says, therefore confess your sins to each other, and pray for each other so that you may be healed, and uh, I think that that uh, we're not going to go around the room at the end of the day this morning and ask each of you to confess your sins. Uh, <laughs> We right. don't have time for mine. <laughs> <laughs> Take all day over here. <laughs> That's my time. <laughs> Still wouldn't be enough, no. But but you know that that's also part of prayer, and not you know that in 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 our prayers to you know to our Lord, Lord, I have done this, I have sinned this way. Please forgive me. That that we mention them specifically in our prayers to to our Lord. That we don't you know so that. By mentioning them specifically, we're starting to address them. If, if I just say, Lord, forgive me, okay, I'm moving on. I'm really not saying, okay, Lord, um, I, 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 I cursed my neighbor because uh, he um, ran over my cat or something like that. <laughs> you know, I, but, you know, being, being specific in, in, your, uh, in your prayer life about what you are doing, what each of us is doing wrong. I think becomes an important part of uh, a prayer, and then uh, and if there's some real difficult thing, then you talk it over with a brother, and uh, you know you you pray for uh, uh, that person. And the, the, I think the key verse there, the prayer of a righteous man, is powerful and effective. And uh, I, I think that uh, uh, is, is significant. What, what's that say about the prayers of us sinners then? Well, what's a righteous man? That's what I would ask. I would ask, how do you define a righteous man versus a sinner? We're all sinners, but can't we be a righteous man too? What is a righteous man? That's, that's the question. A righteous man is a forgiven sinner. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. That's okay. Right standing with God, therefore the name righteous. I mean, that's kind of what I right self definition. Mm -hmm. But once you confess sins and you're in a right relationship with God, then you are righteous because you've been forgiven, and now you can live your life without that burden. Right, that's a good way to put it. Right, but when when we unload our sins, Jesus picks them up, or, and then we live our life without that burden, without that guilt, and and it's because we are forgiven. It's not just because, okay, I got it right and I'm going my way, okay. <laughs> but, but it's because I, I've gone to Jesus and he had, and, I've, and I know that he has forgiven me out of his love and grace. And, and uh, that, that's what, that's what I, I do not become righteous simply because <clears throat> I'm Missouri Synod Lutheran. <laughs> Okay. Or a Pharisee. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> uh, no, I, I am I am righteous because I've been forgiven. And and that's what uh uh is it's not something I've achieved on my own. Maybe there's one or two people in this room who've achieved it on their own. <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't think so. I need a lot of his help. Okay. Yeah, and I, I think so. And I Arnie, I, you, you, you hit on a word that, that happened to me, the forgiveness piece. <clears throat> My next door neighbor, 9.15 in the evening, she calls me and, and she starts railing on me because she believes that I had put a sign out behind their house that said no trespassing and things like that onto the golf course. 
and that I uh, was sitting on my porch and, sh and that I had yelled at her husband, Jack, who was walking the dogs, you know, right, right next to her. I said, I have no idea what you're talking about. And uh, she said, well, you're lying. <laughs> and I said, no, I have no idea what you're talking about. I don't know anything about a sign. I haven't seen Jack. I haven't been outside. And um, I said, let me talk to Jack. And Jack says, um, no, it wasn't you that yelled at me. It was somebody two doors down. I said, okay, I know who you're talking about. So that ended the like evening, closer. you know, and you're kind of going like, where is this coming from? You know, it's, it's just crazy. <coughs> and being accused of things that I had no Thanks, knowledge Ed. of and being told I was a liar. Um, that's, that kind of strikes you, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the next morning she calls me back and she said, she was sobbing, says, I was wrong. Will you forgive me? I said, yes, I'll forgive you. Christians forgive each other. You know, so the, the forgiveness part, the, the, the act of asking for forgiveness and receiving the forgiveness is a very powerful um, mental action, if, if not a physical uh, action. So it just happened to me. It was one of those things that I was like, I don't care that you have a dog. <laughs> we choose not to, but, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. But she was defending her husband who thought he, he was being maligned. Uh, this is a real interesting deal. But she, she woke up and found out, you know, the, and, and she was uh, faithful enough, gracious enough to call you back and say, I, I, in a sense, I sinned against you. Yeah. And, and uh, will you forgive me? And, I made uh, a mistake. I yeah. made a mistake. And that requires yeah. some fortitude. Yeah. 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 That, that takes a lot to do that. It does, mm -hmm. it does, it does. Have you ever done that to somebody else? Mm -hmm. Where they say, I ask your forgiveness? Mm -hmm. I've done that before. And then because I forgive you. Um, yeah. Not frequently, I mean. Yeah. <laughs> and maybe there's some I wouldn't do it to. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we, get, we get that way too, you know, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, which right. is not right, but... Uh, um, yeah, I I, uh, I like that uh, phrase that you said. Uh, you start out with uh, mental mm -hmm. uh, perspective, and you start up with everything else. You know, if, <coughs> if you think about it, you have to start it from here, and it goes on to different parts of your. Sure. You know, I, I really like that. I think that mm -hmm. is true, because I, I I come from the science, and then uh, I like to you, we have to prove everything in order to, in order to to be true and mm -hmm. all that. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Gary, I don't think you were on when I introduced some here. He's between homes right now, so uh, I asked him to join us this morning. So. You mentioned that last week. Thanks for introducing me. Okay, Gar Gary's in Florida. Yes, sir. Hi. So he used to he used to live Hi. here and came to this group. Oh. So, yeah. but we we keep him in the in the loop now through, how, through Zoom. The pandemic in in Florida now is. It, it, Depends it, on who you listen to. <laughs> is that right? <laughs> if you listen to some people, we're all going to die. If you listen to some others, nothing's happening. <laughs> It, it sounds like it's, it's worse than, than Colorado. That's um, we have a lot of cases, but we don't have a, we don't have many deaths at all. Um, there's a few hospitals that are that are pretty racked with uh, patients, but those are mostly the, the metropolitan areas. I think they have more bugs and, and flies over there. Yeah, they do that. <laughs> Isn't that true? <laughs> oh yeah! Oh yeah! Oh yeah! <clears throat> Thanks, Ed, for introducing me. I appreciate it. Okay. Um, where is Jesus in the book of James? He's only mentioned twice. And there's no 
talk about what he did. Where's Jesus? Where's he hiding? I think it's in the paragraphs about patience and suffering. Okay. Because Jesus suffered for us immensely. James is a very practical um, uh, book. Uh, I think the only two times in, in chapter 1, verse 1, uh, he says, James, a servant of God and the Lord Jesus Christ. And then in uh, chapter 2, uh, verse 1, he says, my brothers, as believers in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ, uh, it goes on to say, don't show favoritism. And, and that those are the uh, basically the only two references to Jesus in the whole book of, uh, of James. And um, uh, so what we have here then, I think, is uh, uh, we, we, don't, we don't have the theology of how we connect with Jesus or how Jesus connects with us. But we have examples of how uh, a Christian lives. And, and how a Christian walks, okay? Um, in, uh, um, J James doesn't tell us about how we get to heaven. Uh, James tells us about how we bring heaven down to earth and, and live out the Christian life. And living out the Christian life is, in a sense, bringing heaven and heaven's values down to earth. And... and uh, you know, I, I like the ELCA motto, God's work, our hands. Our hands. And uh, we, we are God's hands in this world. And uh, through our work and through our hands, we're um, bringing heaven's values down here and implementing them in a, in a fallen and a broken, in a broken world. And so um, uh, James is, is the practical application of what of of what all this of what all this is about, and uh, uh, how I, I how I answered that was, um, you know, he doesn't specifically mention Jesus, but but he he talks about Jesus' teachings yeah. and how to how to live. Yeah, yeah. 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 <clears throat> and and he talk he talks about how you know, in, in a sense how uh, you know Jesus lived among them. Right. Jesus was patient. Jesus was forgiving. Jesus was kind. Jesus was, uh, um, uh, he, he would call them to faith, that kind of thing. He would teach them about prayer. Uh, in like in chapter 5, verse 10, he says, brothers, an example, as an example of patience in the face of suffering. Um, you know, Jesus would, was a, very much of an example of, of patience in the midst, midst of suffering as he went to the cross. And, um, uh, you know, he, he, he didn't curse his, uh, the people who, who crucified him, uh, that kind of thing. Uh, and um, so uh, what James is telling us is, okay, this is how we live out our faith in Jesus. This is how we bring heaven down to earth. This is how we care for each other and uh, 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 li live out our life. Um Ernie, I've got a question for you. Close the thought. Do we believe Jesus was perfect? Because I don't. I believe he was human. And he made mistakes. But we 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 pray as if he was a perfect being. Well, somewhere in the Bible it, it said he was sinless. Sinless, but he might have lost his temper. Well, that's true. You know, you know, he, he, overturning he, the money changers, is that a sin? Well, might have been fun. Isn't that, <laughs> isn't that described as righteous anger? It should be anger in a productive yeah. way. Mm -hmm. That's that's what I've been taught. Righteous anger is okay. Unrighteous anger is not. Oh, so I could have been angry at my neighbor for calling me a liar. But I chose not to. Am I perfect? No. No. Absolutely not. Yeah. 
You're a lot better than me. <laughs> <laughs> it's, not, it's not a contest. <laughs> I know. But sinless and perfect to me are two different things. What yeah. is, describe the difference. Well, to me, somebody who is perfect is living the example that James is providing instruction in, in, his, in his book. Sinless could be perfect. I don't know. It's up for discussion. One, one of the old definitions of perfection is completeness. Completeness. Uh, and so in some ways, I think you could consider that it was Christ's complete unity in the Trinity mm. that made him complete, made him perfect. Uh, when he was here on earth, he was man. Mm. Uh, and it's it's almost as hard for us to understand that concept of he is man, he is part of the triune God, right. uh, as it is to, to understand the Trinity itself. Mm. But, uh, it's a matter of Try to keep it as simple as you can, because if you, you, otherwise you can get into some real complex things sure. that really are extraneous. But I, I've always liked that definition of perfection as being complete, being finished. Well, one of the phrases about Jesus when uh, in, at the end of uh, in Luke is, Jesus grew in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and with man. In other words, he grew physically, he grew mentally, he grew in connections, and then, uh, uh, and then, what was the example when he was twelve years old? He went down to Jerusalem with his family uh, for the Passover. Uh, they went back, and at the end of the first day, they found he wasn't in the group. Uh, why? Why didn't he listen to mom and dad and stay? Where was he? He was. It took him three days to find him. Yeah. <laughs> And, and he he was in the temple arguing with the uh, or discussing with with the priest. It is the fact that he wasn't with his mom and dad? What does that say about? Him? Say he was human, and um, I think uh, we uh, uh, out of his out of his humanity. Uh, he, he served. He had the righteous anger. Uh, he did, uh, even on uh, two phrases from the cross. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? But then what was the other one? Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. I mean, if, if you're feeling forsaken, that's a very human expression. That's a very human feeling. He was human. Uh, father, forgive them. He was a, a a child of his father who had learned that you forgive even your enemies and and your your the ones who deepest most deeply offended you. Uh, you clarified it for me because I was I, as we've been studying James. It's all things that you do here on earth. Mm -hmm. You know, so that that helps. I, I look at what happened on earth as opposed to dying on the cross, raising the dead, transfiguration, and, and, and the triune God portion of that. Yeah, that's that's different for me. Okay. And when you, I'm, I'm clear. And, yeah. when, and when you talk about sinless, you know, Christians have their own criteria for sin, right? Mm -hmm. But what about these other religions? There, there's, there, the best definition of sin is different than ours. And they have it, uh, I know the Catholic Church, for example, has different degrees of sin. Right, right. Uh, you have a mortal sin, and I am not sure what else. Venial. Thank you. Menial sin? Venial. Venial. Every venial sin is sin. And what is a venial sin? What is a venial you sin? You told a lie to your mother. Minor. You Minor. told a lie to your mother. And a mortal sin would be committing murder or something to that effect. Uh-huh. Yeah. That's my 
years. That's my six years of parochial school. <laughs> <laughs> you learned well. <laughs> uh, well, a sin is a sin, okay. Um, but uh, yeah, that's you know. Uh, uh, oh, Arnie, Arnie, there's a there's a thing though. Um, there's a lot of Catholics who believe if you've only committed venial sins, you won't go to hell. You'll go to purgatory. Mm -hmm. a moral sin would would condemn you to hell. A venial sin, if you died with a with a parcel of venial sins, you will serve your time in purgatory before you go to hell because you must enter you must enter heaven sinless. Again, that's my parochial school upbringing. Is there a Starbucks in purgatory? <laughs> <laughs> God, I hope so. <laughs> and a golf course. <laughs> and a golf course. <laughs> and a ski hill. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, we, we can work with all kinds of definitions, you know, and, uh, uh, and you know, it'll be interesting to sit when we get to having to sit down with Jesus and ask it and get the final answer to all these questions. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I think the, uh, <clears throat> I think Jesus was truly human. I think he faced all the temptations we face. I think I think he struggled with them. When it says he grew in wisdom, also he, he grew spiritually. I'm sure. I mean, he would go on a prayer. Um, he'd go overnight prayer, you know, and and the, the the his his prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane, you know, the the night before he was crucified. You know that that must have been really a struggle with him. You know, and if as a fully human, he had to be fully human to spend that much time in prayer and really saying, you know, is this the way to go? I, you know, I know I'm going to the cross. I know this is going to happen. He was fully human, and uh, and he didn't. And in that sense, when I say he's fully human, I don't think he had an extra rope pulling him up i mean he, he was really struggling the same way you and i would struggle if, if we face something yeah. that difficult and that hard i mean i don't think he had a special advantage he was the son of god but but i think he, at being fully human he still had to struggle with with everything you know in his life and uh, and i think that's that's the point here that um um <clears throat> yeah um you wonder what uh what his some of his prayers were we know, we know the prayers that he that written down but it, it says he went often up into a place of his own and it doesn't yeah. tell you what he prayed for yeah. was it, uh, early in the morning yeah. and it has i wonder sometimes I, i've thought about it i wonder what was he praying uh, i know he prayed for me at him as he was praying for uh, at in john at the end but was he praying oh uh, well peter what's uh, i gotta pray for peter here <laughs> you know uh, probably the same things we were going we go through when we pray and, and it's zig here zag there <laughs> and and he, he he was tempted you know and i'm sure he went to his heavenly father and said hey, give me strength to face this temptation and and to say no to sin I mean, being fully human, he would have had to struggle with those things, you know. Just, fully just... human, and God help me put up with Peter <laughs> <laughs> and Leroy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, that 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 yeah. would that would be that would be very very much a part of it. Yeah. And um, uh, well, Arnie, we've hit the hit the time. Do you have any closing thoughts on James? James is good. <laughs> He's got a lot of good good advice for us as as brothers and as brothers in Christ. And uh, um, I think that uh, uh, it, it, it's very much a, 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 a um, course one hundred and one in in how to live the Christian life and how to bring the values of heaven down to earth uh, into our everyday life. In terms of prayer, forgiveness, love, uh, not getting angry, uh, patience and suffering, and, and and all the and all the other things, uh, you know, facing the uh, the difficulties of uh, of life. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Amen. So, what's our next study topic? Anybody? I'll tell you for why you think about it for next week. Why don't each of you pick out your favorite psalm? And if you pick out Psalm 23, you got to pick out one other one too. <laughs> <laughs> and and let's just let's just do a a a day on prayer. You know, uh, what do these psalms say about uh, uh, prayer and the, the, the struggle in prayer for that? Okay. I said, I said it's very good, but my name is Psalm. It it could be spelled like. T S A L M Psalm Psalm, but my spell S O M S O M. Okay, okay, okay. But but why why don't we do that? And and then if if you want to think about you know if you want to take some other whatever other course and we we can spend the whole you know bunch of weeks of the Psalms. But but let's let's just do this for for next time. Then we can decide where. Well, where you want to take this this group in terms of study, but but pick out your favorite psalm. If it's twenty three, you got to have one other one, <laughs> uh, and then would and then just be be ready to talk about why that that psalm is meaningful for you. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Ed, for introducing me. The sure. Uh, You're welcome the, back any uh, anytime. Uh, this, uh, First time I ever joined this kind of thing. Okay. Good. I went I went to churches, many churches in Greeley, Colorado, mm -hmm. you know, north of Penrose. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I just look at the pretty girls then, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't I didn't think about anything else, you know. So but uh, there ain't so many pretty girls. Around here, what, what, happened, uh -oh. what happened to our uh -oh. sister? What happened to our sister? We have so many brothers here. So, well, this is just a men's Bible group. <laughs> they have a woman's woman's Bible group another day. They do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, what day is that? Uh, <laughs> in order to come. <laughs> so, easy song. Easy. Song. <laughs> But just, in a just prayer to this morning, study, we'll... just to study, you know. Oh, besides book, it, you, you study, we are studying, you know. When in prayers, let's also that remember mental. our brother Psalm too, right? Okay. And um, okay, I would ask that uh, you take a look at uh, volunteering for devotions. All you need to do is give me the date and your name. I've got the rest of your information. That'll that'll help round us out. So um, anyway, Gary, let's start with you for our. Uh, uh, Closing prayers before we go to Leroy for uh, closing with the Lord's Prayer. Gary? Um, dear Lord, thank you for this gathering, chance to get together in your name. We pray for my family. We pray for the men and their families of this group. And we pray for our church. Lord, one of the names that I didn't hear mentioned in discussion today was Pastor Kathy. We raise up Pastor Kathy and hope that you guide her in leading us in these times of trouble, along with the church council. In your name we pray, Lord. Amen. Amen. Dear Lord, thank you for another day, the sun shining through the smoke, but it's shining. Nevertheless, we thank you for this group and the fellowship we enjoy. And again, we pray for this church that it can get through these struggles. We pray for policemen all over who have a tough job, and especially the firemen right now, mm -hmm. and that maybe nature can take a, a turn in uh, help this extinguishing these fires on the West Coast and causing all this havoc across the country. Pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Psalm, would you like to offer a prayer? Uh, yes. Uh, I'd like to offer a prayer that uh, we all say. Amen. You're right. Father, we uh, I give you 
thanks again for this group. We give you thanks that we are able to meet again in person with, at the church. I'm going to lift up to you in prayer, uh, Lord. The, my friend Lynn, the person that comes to church with me here, she's having some pulmonary problems, and it looks like she may have to go to have oxygen permanently. Uh, lift her up in prayer. And all who are ill and need your healing, Lord, I pray for them. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Dear Lord, thank you for this day. Let us rejoice in it and be glad. Amen. Lord, I also thank you for this group and the, all the men who aren't here as well. I pray for family members for my grandson coming back from being in his dad's for three weeks. And he's always disconglomerated, so I pray for his equilibrium. Pray for my wife who's having still having breathing problems. And there's no solution at this point, especially since we're getting ready to leave for Oregon for six weeks here in, in a couple of weeks ourselves. And we pray for all those who are, are having breathing problems, especially with the with the smoke. I pray for the, the this church and the church at large. There are so many struggles these days, financial and political and personalities, all kinds of problems. And, with dwindling membership and uh, difficulties in the economy, it becomes very difficult sometimes for people to remain religiously focused. We pray for all of that as we pray in your name. Amen. Lord God, we thank you for the opportunity to study your word as we have today and to hold discussions on it and help to educate ourselves and each other. I also pray for safe travels for those who are away from us and also for those of us who will be traveling soon. Take us to our destinations and back again safely. Amen. Gracious God, we thank you for this time of, of sharing your word, of listening to you speak to us through the scriptures. Uh, we pray that we, um, that we may uh, look to you as revealing the love of our Heavenly Father, and that by our lives, we may replicate the values of heaven in our, in our community. We pray for uh, this community of faith, that you would uh, be with the leadership and with Pastor Kathy as uh, we move through the time of transition uh, to become uh, a, um, a, a burning candle in our community which lights up uh, your face among the people. I pray for the men in this group, in their personal journeys, uh, that they may be blessed with your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, I would like to have your blessings on my mother-in-law, who's 105, and her caretaker, who uh, does a yeoman's task uh, in Oak Park, that's uh, her daughter, Mary. Uh, I hope that during this time of transition in the church, that we look upon the blessings and the good things, as well as those things we need to improve. Let us not forget the blessings. And I'll offer uh, up prayers and several things are, are going through my head. First of all, uh, prayers of thanks to uh, Ed Paines because he is tireless in his work around keeping this uh, place running. I'm talking about the physical facilities here at Cross of Christ. And also uh, Ed Contral, who uh, takes care of us in, in preparation for the coffee and tea that we drink in the morning on Tuesday mornings. I would also offer a, a prayer because as our children and grandchildren go back to school this next week, um, I think they go back on, on Wednesday, that... Um, we have some civility in, our, in the, the parents' 
uh, you know, care from, from their teachers and um, help us get through um, this uh, variant virus that is, is impacting so many people. So for that, there are so many different <clears throat> options that we, that we hear about of, uh, or of options of opinions. So given that, Lord, teach us to pray. And Leroy, would you lead us in the uh, Lord's Prayer? Our Father, who art, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come. come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And it is not a temptation, but deliver us from the evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. Very good to see you. Yeah, Rob, thank you. Send me the video. And uh, would you remind Grover to send me video from last week? I'm, I'm having trouble uh, getting it to upload. It's on my machine, but I have not been able to get it to go up to Dropbox. I'll keep trying. Okay, whenever. Thanks for what you cool. do, Greg. See ya. Adios, Greg.